I'm just curious, how many people have uh, been to an event or done anything at this track, Land Motor Sports Park? Because this is our, our first time. You guys have been here, anybody else? Okay, so a few people. Um, it was interesting for us coming down here because we never tested at this track, we really didn't know what it was going to be like, so yesterday was kind of our first uh, fly through this and the cars are doing very well, but uh, we weren't quite sure what we were getting into. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that picture that was up uh, right at the beginning. Can you pop that back up by any chance? Um, this was taken the first day, and this is one of the reasons we wanted everybody out early, because it can go from looking like this to looking like that in just a few minutes. Uh, it's great for photo drama, but not great for uh, lap times on the track. And so we're trying to get you out here before the heat of the day really boils uh, things up. So, so going back a little bit in history, I'll start in 63. Uh, Zara Arcus Duntoff, uh, the first Corvette chief engineer, was looking for a way to uh, improve Corvette's uh, racing uh, performance out in the field. Uh, at that time, uh, there wasn't uh, factory support uh, for racing, and so it all had to be kind of done clandestinely. And so he had a plan to produce these 120, 125 cars, Grand Sports, and get them out of the factory, uh, get them into um, private owner's hands, and have them go racing. Uh, unfortunately, there was an industry-wide edict at the time that uh, there was not going to be factory support uh, for racing, and Zora got caught. And so instead of 120-some cars, five uh, were produced. And we're really lucky uh, today because we have one of those five, uh, some of the most sought-after and flexible cars uh, in the world. Uh, we have actually the fifth car uh, labeled as number two, which raced as number two right over here. We have Bill Tower, uh, the owner, uh, here today. Um, presenting the vehicle, so you actually get to look at the start of this history, and uh, it's been pretty impressive from 63 uh, all the way to where we are now. Uh, in terms of the timeline, so uh, five cars in 62-63, uh, um, then the Grand Sport name kind of went uh, dormant, we didn't use it on uh, Corvette, and until the last year of the fourth generation car, um, a very special car, uh, it was the Admiral Blue car, white racing stripes and the red hash marks on the fender. Only a thousand were produced, it's kind of a collector's car, special engine, um, really a, a nice car and well sought after. We have an example uh, over here also of that. Um, the next year following that car, we introduced the fifth generation Corvette, the C5, and uh, immediately wanted to go uh, racing. Uh, my predecessor, Dave Hill, was a passionate advocate for racing as a way to improve the brand. So shortly after we introduced the fifth generation car, we went racing, chose to do endurance racing because it was the closest thing to using uh, the street car and the learnings coming out of endurance racing were the most applicable uh, to street cars. And so in 1999, we introduced the, the C5R and uh, have been completely engaged ever since, not taking any uh, breaks and not stepping away, been completely committed uh, to the race program. All the way through the C5, and then through the C6, so the C6R um, bowing in uh, 2005. And then towards the end of the life cycle of the sixth generation car, we brought back the Grand Sport again. This time, not as a niche collector car, but as a more broadly uh, option, uh, more widely available uh, vehicle. You can get it as a coupe or convertible. You can get a manual or automatic transmission. And uh, we ended up selling uh, over 28,000 uh, of those the last couple of uh, years of the sixth generation. In fact, it was our highest selling model uh, in spite of the fact that it wasn't the cheapest. So in 2014, he introduced the seventh generation car um, and then went racing with the C7R and that's what we're racing today. We were really lucky to have uh, Oliver Gavin uh, here uh, the first day. Unfortunately, he's racing at Lime Rock uh, this weekend and had to uh, leave us, but he uh, went out and set some fast laps on the track, uh, gave people hot laps. Um, and he's uh, an overall joy to be around. He's a really great guy, lots of insights on racing, and uh, it's, it's kind of emblematic that you can get somebody of his uh, stature to come to the, the media show and, and talk to the media and talk about what uh, he's experiencing in the car. Uh, he has a Z51 Stingray at home, and uh, as he walked out the door, he was telling me and Harlan he wants <laughs> that Grand Sport, uh, the collector's edition actually that uh, I'm going to talk about in just a, a second. So uh, the Grand Sport is kind of the, the middle car. Uh, you have the Stingray, uh, as you call it entry level, it's hardly entry level. Uh, and then Z06 as the, the top dog. 
Uh, and the Grand Sport kind of combines a lot of the great attributes of both cars. So the naturally aspirated engine, but with all the other performance hardware uh, available. In terms of performance bandwidth, uh, across the model line, you can see uh, from Stingray up to Z06, 0 to 60, uh, four seconds uh, flat, 0 to 60, that's the slowest car uh, we make. Uh, and then go sub three on a Z06 uh, automatic. Quarter mile times, low 12s, uh, down to high 10s uh, on the Z06. And uh, skid pad cornering, um, you guys probably know, we uh, have some of the best cornering cars in the world, uh, going from one to 1.2 Gs. Uh, in terms of the model differentiation, just so you can kind of be a, a Grand Sport uh, spotter, uh, one nice thing about the naturally aspirated engine is you can have the low hood. Uh, a lot of people are really impressed that you can do a V8 front engine car and keep the hood uh, as low as it is. Uh, we've had compliments from design organizations around the world scratching their head as to how we're able to do that. And so having the, the, the bulging uh, fenders and quarters uh, that aggressive look, but then still keeping that uh, low hood for good forward visibility is a really nice uh, and unique combination of the Grand Sport. We do some uh, things aesthetically a little bit different to distinguish the model. So the grill color is a little bit of a different texture. Uh, the tail lights are keeping in red and keeping the smoke to the neutral density uh, tail lamps uh, unique to the Z06. Uh, we've developed two different kinds of quarter ducts. The original Stingray had a flush louvered uh, quarter duct, and then we developed a higher flowing version uh, for the Z06. And so um, that's the version that uh, comes on the Grand Sport. In fact, the Grand Sport gets all the high-end cooling. Uh, it's kind of the most robust uh, track cooling package uh, we've ever put on the street. So it gets that high quarter duct for the inlet for the uh, trans and dip cooler, and we're doing it in monochrome, so it's in uh, body color uh, as distinct from the uh, carbon flash accent that we have on the Z06. Uh, of course, you get all of the wide uh, body work, and Corvettes historically uh, have been identified by their front uh, fender cove, and so that gets a unique uh, treatment as well uh, for the Grand Sport. Uh, caliper colors, you start with uh, black and gray uh, on Stingray and, uh, and Grand Sport, and then red is kind of the, the starting point for the Z06. Of course, we have optional uh, caliper covers, so people are able to mix and max and, and create uh, dream combinations, uh, whatever they can uh, imagine uh, for the um, for their dream car. And uh, finally, the aero package. Um, we're putting the most aggressive aero uh, on this car. Um, you don't get the stage three that we put on the Z06. That's the very big end plates on the front splitter and the clear wicker bridge. We've not found a track where that's faster on the Grand Sport. It works really well with 650 horsepower, but it's more drag than the, uh, the Grand Sport likes, and so, um, you can still get those parts as an accessory uh, if you want to. There may be a track somewhere in the world where it makes sense, but uh, we don't think so. So our top level is the uh, uh, aero package. In terms of pricing, um, uh, not a lot of pricing changes. Um, you know, we're trying to hold the line on pricing as much as we can. So the Stingray uh, coupe starts at 50, 60s are all including uh, destination uh, charge, um, 4,000 more uh, for the convertible. Then Z51 uh, goes up to 61 and 65, and then the Grand Sport comes in at 66 and uh, $70,000. Uh, the Z06 price is uh, almost unchanged, it's already at 80 and uh, 84. Uh, in terms of more uh, detail on the Grand Sport, um, you know, it comes with the, the standard LT1 engine, so 460 horsepower, 465 foot pounds of torque, the standard Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires, and uh, Brembo brakes, iron brakes, they're shared with the standard uh, Z06. And I already talked about the, uh, the uh, body uh, content. A lot of the tuning parts are specifically tuned for the Grand Sport, so things like springs and bars and shock, but then all the other things you don't think about, all the electronic controls, ABS, traction control, um, stability systems, all have to be uh, custom uh, engineered for this. Uh, standard equipment is magnetic selective ride, and the ELSD, which really helps uh, stabilize the car out there, makes it easy to drive. First time on Grand Sport, we're offering the top level uh, chassis content. So Z07, uh, like it is on the Z06, includes uh, remote carbon ceramic brakes, the biggest rotors we can fit inside the wheels. 
and you'll be really happy to have those as you come down this front straightaway at about 130 miles an hour and come into the tightest corner of hairpin at the bottom and it's all downhill and it gets steeper as you get to the hairpin so you'll be really happy uh, to have those brakes on hand. Uh, we got the Michelin uh, Sport 2 Cup tires, uh, some of the grippiest tires uh, in the world. Uh, that helps us produce the 1.2 G's lateral acceleration and some of the best uh, braking distances uh, in the world. Uh, under 100 feet, uh, braking from 60 miles an hour to zero. And when we introduced these uh, on the uh, Z06, we talked about you can stop from 25 miles an hour to zero in the length of the car. The car's about 180 inches long, so you can go 25 to zero and 180 inches. So really, really uh, impressive stopping capability, and you'll, you'll see that on the track. You add it all up together, you know, it's a really well-balanced car, uh, great weight distribution. And uh, in our testing at our Milford Proving Grounds, the Grand Sport is uh, less than a second behind the C6 ZR1, which was a, a benchmark uh, car for its time. Of course, you get all the regular uh, performance and technology that comes with the Corvette, including the PDR, which I hope you'll make heavy use of today. We're going to give you a, uh, flash drives to put in so you can record all your laps and compare them to others, compare them to Ollie's. You can come in here if you want and uh, look at your laps compared to Oliver Gavin. If you beat him, we'll set up a conference call. And, uh, <laughs> you can give him some pointers uh, for Lime Rock this weekend. I see you probably appreciate that. Uh, of course, you get all the other uh, things like uh, Chevrolet MyLink and uh, Apple CarPlay and uh, Amazon Auto. And uh, I didn't mention PTM in the chassis controls, but that's also custom tuned uh, for the Grand Sport. In terms of design, um, you know we've got the car. You can get a car that looks just like the uh, the collector's car in '96, and that's making a lot of people, a lot of our current cars, happy. A lot of people really love that car. But you can get 10 uh, exterior colors. You get uh, specific uh, interior uh, Grand Sport uh, cues. We're actually bringing back a wheel we've used before. We call it a, a cup wheel. It's one of the lightest, stiffest wheels uh, we ever made. Uh, we used it on a C6, and everybody loved it. And um, it kind of didn't get, it didn't have a lot of penetration. And so we thought, you know what, we'll bring that back. It's one nice thing about uh, carrying over your bolt circle from year to year and wheel offsets you can actually use tires and wheels uh, from past generations, and it's really nice uh, for the aftermarket as well. Comes in a bunch of different colors, and um, you can actually get uh, red safety belts. Uh, it's a nice little cute. People think that's a, a real sporty look. And then the collector's edition. This is one that Oliver Gavin uh, wants. We'll only make a thousand of these. Um, it's a top contented car. Has a unique VIN sequence. It comes in one of our new colors for 2017. That's uh, Watkins Glen uh, Gray Metallic. Uh, you can see the car right around the corner here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we've seen this trend where people do uh, kind of conservatively base colored cars, but then do vibrant accents. And that's what this car is. And that's what we call tension blue accents. So the hash marks are tension blue. And then the whole interior is tension blue as well. Uh, we've seen a big increase in people buying our red interiors. And because it's not like wall-to-wall -wall red, it has really nice accented uh, red interiors that's uh, really moved up in uh, option penetration. So this is kind of a blue counterpoint uh, to that. Um, we have a lot of people um, sending us letters that they wish they could get this on other combinations, but we're holding it special uh, for this collector's edition. Uh, the Heritage package includes um, the content you see here and uh, some interior content. And you've got 10 exterior colors, you've got uh, six colors of racing stripes, you've got six colors of hash marks. You can mix and match with brake caliper colors, and so there's almost an infinite combination of things that you can do. Everything from kind of subtle, sophisticated tone on tone to vibrant, high contrast graphics. And um, just this isn't all of them, this is just some of them. It's cycling through here. Um, I think we're going to, you know, customers all want a one of one car. You know, they want something unique, uh, something that in their imagination is the best possible version of the car. And so we're trying to give them as many choices as possible. So that's the story for Grand Sport. Really looking forward to you guys uh, driving it today. And I uh, want to make sure you guys give us feedback as you get out of the car, what your impressions are. There's a bunch of us wearing the white shirts. Uh, you can talk to any of us about uh, what your experience or any other questions that you have.